Hello, Brother Monroe here. Welcome back to Ultimate Animal Dreadnoughts. And an extra video for you today. Meaning if I uh, manage things right, there's going to be three. So uh, this is a Patreon sponsor video. And this one is sent by Azrael. Thank you very much for that. Um, and it was a request to see the Fuso class battleship going up against... I think we'll go for China. Um going up against uh, quite a lot of stuff. So two battleships, um, five heavy cruisers, and five destroyers, which is certainly doable. Now, I'm going to give myself a little bit of a tech advantage. I'm going to go for uh, 1926 versus 1916. So pretty sizable tech advantage, but um, I, I'm severely outnumbered. So they, they have a lot of light ships. Um, and uh, and an extra battleship over me. So let's get into the design phase. Now here we are with the Fuso Hull, the modernized Dreadnought 3, which uh, I know people are a fan of. <laughs> uh, should we go for the biggest one? Yeah, why not? Screw it. Um, ooh, advanced Pagoda Tower, yes please. And, yeah, might as well go for the tall secondary tower. Now, in terms of setup, I am going to need to include some funnels. Uh, let us see. So if I go for oil 2, I get 110 smoke. Let's go for a mega funnel complex in that case. Try and get it. Centered. Move the towers back a bit. There we go. It gives me a lot of deck space to work with. Lovely stuff. Okay, uh, I'm going to go for a super veteran crew. Go for standard bulkheads. Uh, minimum range. There's no requirement to have lots of range on this. Now. We're not going to be able to go very fast on a natural boiler, but how about a balanced boiler? Uh, 28 knots for a big ship like that. That's, that's not bad. Uh, WD steam turbines, diesel, and a propeller shaft. Yes, why not? Right, let's get the guns sorted out. I do have the 17s at Mark 1, or 16s at Mark 2, but the 15s at Mark 3, I think are uh, probably going to be my best bet. Next question is, how many of them do I try and fit in? Now, you might be thinking, oh, you, you're going to go for a lot, but I don't think I am. I think I might go for a slightly unusual... Well, unusual for this hole, but very pedestrian set up because I'm pretty sure this is where the main belt ends on this ship and again similarly all this stuff at the back is cool um, actually I want no I, I definitely have an idea of what I want to do so we're going to go for Eight 15-inch guns, nicely tucked into the, cent the central citadel, giving me a lot of deck space. Uh, but we are going to have a lot of casement guns. Now, they're all Mark IV. Now, we are facing heavy cruisers, um, but someone did say that they've improved how much these things add to your roll, but looks to me like if you go full ham with these, you're still getting a lot of roll. So I think 8-inch guns are a little bit excessive. Uh, I'd rather have these two deal with the destroyers, and I think a 5-inch gun will do nicely for that. That gives me a lot of 5-inch firepower, and only gives me a roll of 10, 
which I think is pretty reasonable. Now, what I wanted to try and do was maybe get some form of secondary armament on the back, because I'm noticing that's actually those boats actually block this 15-inch gun. So let's move that 15-inch gun. See, I don't want to put it there. Hmm. The other way of doing it, which will look quite strange, is rather than going for jewels, is going for triples. I'm popping this on a barbette so that it can fire over the top. Again, bit, it does look a bit weird, um, but I'm going to have a secondary gun armament laid out along here. So, secondary guns, and we have fives already, so I did want to get some 8-inch guns in. Now, if I put that there, can that still fire over? Yes, it can. Perfect. So, I think we'll get a couple of those. 8-inch, and another one right on the back. And, do you know what? Actually, we have an halfway offset. Move this forward a bit. And this forward a bit. We might be able to fit one in here. With... A barbet. Firing arcs are all okay, but that gives me quite a lot of 8-inch firepower as well, which should help deal with the heavy cruisers. That's the plan, anyway. Okay, now what about smaller guns? Can we fit 3-inch guns anywhere? Yes, here, here, and here. But it's not happy about it. Two inch guns work a bit better. Yeah. Because we can also fit them in the pagoda as kind of a last line of defense against destroyers. Shift that back a bit. There we go. Lovely. Okay. You can see that working. <laughs> ah. Okay. Okay, uh, let's lower that range again. Now, gun setup. Uh, I have to go with Cordite 3. Okay. Um, I think uh, TNT 3 for this. We'll go with semi auto loaders and advanced hydraulics. What's my flash fire chance currently? 6%. With a barbette 4 and an all or nothing and reinforced bulkheads. 2%. 5% with the super heavies. Okay, I can live with that. I can live with that. Let's get an anti flood. Some anti torpedo. Double bottom hull. Uh, range finder. Acoustics. A little bit more bulkheads. And then we can uh, get a bit more armor. So let's go for 15 inch on the guns. With six on the top. Actually more than that. Let's go for 7.5 on the top of the turrets. That's good. Wow, those 8 inch guns are pretty heavily armored. At 14.4. Um, the casements, I would like to armor up more, but they're they're max they're maxed out. So it's a case of increasing the mid belt. I think sixteen would be good. Uh, four belt as well, just in case we take a hit, like coming in this way, uh, would be good. Get up to say eight. Uh, mid deck would be nice to increase it to six if we can manage it, and then the rest on the four deck. Ooh, nope. 
little bit more on the tower and get any more on the superstructure? No. Nope, that's pretty much it. There we go. The uh, here. Interesting, interesting ship. Oh, like, kind of like a, a proto Yamato. A little bit, especially with that secondary gun firing over the top and the three triple main gun. This rear arrangement is a little odd, I will admit, but um, I think it'll work because we're not relying on our rear armor to do much work. It's only protecting eight inch guns and five inch guns. Um, and most of the important stuff is behind the main belt. That's that's the plan. Let's see what the enemy brings. And uh, if we can wipe them out without uh, too much trouble. Hmm. Oh, it is recording. <laughs> That's what I was trying to check. <laughs> Apologies there. The, uh, the little uh, thing that tells me whether it's recording or not disappeared. Just wanted to check that I was actually still recording. Okay. So here we go. Empire of Japan against China with two tiny battleships. Okay. So this is, this is more uh, kind of a... a also getting swarmed by a bunch of small ships, smaller ships. This might be a little bit more of a bloodbath than I anticipated, but um, never mind. The ship looks good, in my opinion. Look at all those cases of guns. Looks good from the side too. It is a little weird, that rearrangement. It is a little weird. Let's uh, see if we can find the enemy. No radar. Maybe be considered like a an ultra dreadnought. This thing, in a way. Right. I think that's a cruiser. Yep. crew working wonders. It's a pretty good chance to hit on uh, nearly all the guns, actually. taking pretty well. A lot of blocked messages coming up. That's another cruiser hold. They must have many blockages or something. Because uh, a few flooding hits and uh, they go down pretty easy. That I think is a destroyer. Flash 
fire. Oh dear. <laughs> yeah, that's not healthy. Uh, so yeah, let's have a look. 10,000 tonnes, cordite and picric acid, so they are quite explosive. Few bulkheads. Okay. They're just getting demolished by the, uh, the 15s though. Good, and uh, these two heavy cruisers getting uh, rapidly disassembled and dismissed. Yeah, we really have not taken very much damage at all. close. another destroyer. Ooh. Yeah, lots of uh, impacts, but uh, they haven't done very much. A bit of scorching, but that's uh, not too bad. Yeah. Probably should now that I think we're firing at them. What have we got? Oh wow, they really are earlier than I was expecting. Uh, 12 inch guns on the side, and then 10 and 8. And, oh god. Maximum bulk case though. Slow. Not well armoured. Yeah, they are no match. Maybe should have done this with five year tech advantage, not ten. Still, fun build. Oh my word. Yeah, I think I'm pretty sure. I'm oh no, they have short range torps. Yeah, they're they're gonna really struggle against this. I don't even think the two inch guns if I had to fire a single shell. Meanwhile, those battleships really suffering. I'm not quite sure why they're maneuvering like that, but uh, it's not helping them. They're just getting uh, bolted down. Changling and the Xiang. Just not faring particularly well. Kind of explosive they're using. Two powder one and TNT two. Alright.
is rather unfair. I mean, those 12 inch shells are not doing anything, even when they are able to hit. Yeah, just completely unable to hurt this ship. Although, I mean, yeah, kind of pretty much what happened, or what would have happened, um, trying to have more of an AV in uh, the uh, uh, war in the 30s. I can definitely see uh, something like this happening, where uh, you know, Japan doesn't you know, send one of its older modernised dreadnoughts because they know that you know, China doesn't have anything that can stand up to it. But uh, good to know that this thing can basically handle itself. Really doesn't need any escorts or anything. So, with maximum bulk hits, they do take quite a lot of shells. frightening ships in the world. Uh, obviously it's very heavy, nearly 70,000 tons, but you know, 28 knots, pretty fast for a battleship. Um, so it's faster than a Queen Elizabeth. As 9 15 inch guns, it's pretty decent. And yeah, a ton of secondary guns. It would be an interesting one. Very much kind of uh, top end dreadnought. Really curious to see uh, uh, the campaign when it comes out. Not that, uh, well, we know that we're getting the basic campaign in Core Patch 1, but you know, the campaign where you progress technologically. Um, I'm really curious to see if we get refits. I really hope we do get to see refits. Um, so you can kind of take a ship like this and keep the core of it, but, you know, upgrade its systems and things. Anyway, um, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for some more Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Bye-bye.